last Shabbat, we were introduced to Nathan Phillips and Nick Sandman. Phillips, a Native American elder with the Omaha tribe and former Marine Corps reservist. Sandman, a junior at Covington Catholic High School, an all-boys school in northern Kentucky. The two were featured in amateur video and photos that very quickly went viral on social media last Friday and were carried by cable news and other media throughout the weekend. Quick poll, show of hands, do you know the video and photo that I'm referring to? Okay. Okay, so most know the scene. As one social critic described the scene, the initial video shows Phillips playing a tribal drum, standing directly in front of a boy with clear skin and lips reddened from the cold. The boy, Nick Sandman, is wearing a red Make America Great Again hat, and he is smiling at Phillips in a way that is implacable and inscrutable. The boys around him are cutting up, dancing to the drumbeat, making faces at one another and at various iPhones. Personally, the short video made me cringe. My initial outrage, mind you, not yet knowing the names of those depicted, their backgrounds, or their intentions, was further fueled by similar reactions from my friends on Facebook and Instagram. Those red caps, young boys, so smugly jeering a graying adult. Young white boys, menacing an older man of color. My initial reactions were affirmed and even reinforced by the news I consume. The headlines read, Boys in Make America Great Again hats mob native elder at Indigenous People's March. Celebrities and politicians, too, were quick to comment. I wondered to myself, and Rabbi Geffen and I spoke this week, if the photo of Phillips and Sandman from last weekend's confrontation at the Lincoln Memorial will be an iconic image in American history, one day perhaps reminiscent of the image that earned Alan Diaz a Pulitzer Prize for his photograph of Elian Gonzalez and the armed U.S. agent. Similar to that now iconic photo, the frightened Elian Gonzalez, last weekend's incident also evoked strong, knee-jerk reactions on all sides. The story of Phillips and Sandman is a Rorschach test wrote one journalist this week. Tell me how you reacted, and I can probably tell you where you live, who you voted for in 2016, and your general take on a list of other issues. Yeah, I was struck this week by just how many individuals and professional news organizations who published quickly, later partially or fully walked back statements as new, longer videos and further reporting emerged. They added disclaimers like, this article and headline have been updated several times since its first publication to add additional reporting regarding witness accounts, statements, and other details. Even the boys' high school backed away from their initial statement. Initially, the incident elicited a frenzy of reactions from so many, myself and my friends included, all of us so sure of the truth, only to amend later when other truths were revealed. Now hear me when I say that I am not making moral equivalencies 
or suggesting at all that there are good people on both sides. My intention this evening is not to judge the character of those depicted or analyze the content of the videos and photos from last weekend's confrontation, but for us to consider our reactions to them. An invitation for all of us to consider our reactivity, to identify it, and to hone it. For I fear that in today's climate, there will be more events like that one. Leading Jewish thinker and author Dr. Yehuda Kurtzer shared this week on Facebook, I know I am guilty of having fast-formed opinions and sharing them may be too much, but I am genuinely growing concerned about my own ability to sort out what I am and should be passionate or concerned about and how that correlates to what really matters. I am increasingly conscious, says Kurtzer, of the costs of social media on my temperament. So for a response to Kurtzer's conundrum, let's turn to Torah. In this week's portion, we meet Moses, who the text describes is sitting magistrate among the people, while the people stood about him from morning until evening. The people were incessantly demanding Moses interpret and judge their situations quickly and all the time. Not so different from our 24-hour news cycle, no rest for the weary, no time to think things through. Observing the frenzied scene around Moses, Moses' father-in-law, Yitro, says to him, Lo tov hadavar asher ata oseh. The thing you are doing is not right. You will surely wear yourself out, and these people as well, for the task is too heavy for you simply cannot do it alone. About this verse, Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs teaches, interestingly, the sentence, what you are doing is not good, lo tov, is one of only two places in Torah where the phrase not good occurs. The other is in Genesis 2. It reads, it is not good for human beings to be alone. We cannot lead alone. We cannot live alone. This is one of the axioms of biblical anthropology. The Hebrew word for life, chayim, is in the plural, as if to signify that life is essentially shared. We share this world with individuals with whom we agree and disagree. Tonight, we share this sanctuary with people with whom we agree and disagree. Many of us share offices and dining room tables with people with whom we agree, and people with whom we disagree. That's our reality, and we are all, our families, our synagogue community, our nation, and the world, better because of our diversity. But we live in a moment in time that thrives on instant gratification and indulges our most instinctive or base judgments, not well thought through or measured in any way. In our hastiness, we are often quick to judge. So what would it look like if our first instinct was to react with mercy rather than judgment? for our first step to align with the divine's attribute of rachamim and not deen, of mercy and not judgment. See, we are a people created in the image of a God who is slow to anger and abounding in kindness. We must strive to be that way too. It is, after all, the approach that Yitro suggests to Moses, a response that is measured demonstrative of our better selves. 
That is not to say that we can ignore part B of that biblical verse. Adonai, slow to anger and abounding in kindness, yet not remitting all punishment. I am not suggesting that we make excuses for evil or ignore immorality in our world. On the contrary, we must end injustice and violence everywhere. But I am suggesting that this world might be a better place if we were conditioned to first react from a place of mercy and make judgments based on a fullest truth available to us. Otherwise, we open ourselves to the strong forces of manipulation and groupthink, which can lead in the extreme, God forbid, to baseless hatred and foolishness. That photo of Phillips and Sandman will endure as an iconic image in American history, and there will be more like it. In her response to that photo, journalist and mother, Julie Irwin Zimmerman, wrote, Next time a story like this surfaces, I'll try to sit it out until more facts have emerged. I'll remind myself that the truth is sometimes unknowable, and I'll stick to discussing the news with people I know in real life, instead of with strangers whom I've never met. I'll get my news from legitimate journalists instead of from an online mob for whom Saturday morning indignation is just another form of entertainment. When, not if, we are again faced with a similar situation as we were last weekend, I pray that we can all muster the inner strength and fortitude to act in that way. Can you hear us own? May our actions merit those words coming true.